<clears throat> Good morning. How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody is well. I thank God and praise God for another day of life so that I can, and I've said this from the beginning, I don't care if this is for one person. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to speak what God speaks to me. It may be five years down the road that somebody sees the video and they're blessed by it. I'm good. As long as I know as I'm, that I'm working in his plan with my life, I'm happy. So something I just want to, I, I feel like so many of us and you know, myself included, always remember that when God speaks to me and when God puts a word in me, it's not always, uh, you know, he, he speaks to me. I mean, I've yielded my body, this human flesh to him so that he can speak and so that he can um, have an avenue and a, a use of my body that I did not give him before is now his to, to do it as he pleases when it comes to that. So anytime there's a word given to me, always remember too, number one, I'm probably speaking to myself. And number two, that God blesses me just as much with that word. So <clears throat> today is something that I know in, in 2021, um, I'd, I'd probably say it's into the high 90s, if not 100% of people in this world are full of worry. We are worried about the pandemic. Obviously, look at me. We are worried about the financial future of our homes, the financial future of this country. We are worried about supply and demand. We are worried if there was a gas shortage. We've already seen how people go crazy. Regardless of what your status is when it comes to if you're a believer or if you're not, there are just as many, if not more, people who consider themselves or our believers that are stuck in this horrific hamster wheel of terror and fear. One thing we, we need to realize is that God called us, his people, to be separate. He didn't call us to be like everybody else. He didn't tell us or he did not advise us to take on life's problems the way that somebody without him would. As a matter of fact, the word's completely opposite. And I know in 1 Timothy, the Bible says that he did not give us a spirit of fear. And there's a very important part of that, next part of that verse. He gave us a spirit of power and of sound mind. So the Bible says, I think it's 1 Timothy 5, 7, <clears throat> that God did not give you a spirit of fear, but he gave you a he gave you power and a sound mind. I really want to read that verse now, but I'm not going to back out. So you can look it up on your own. But the point is this. He didn't give us a spirit of fear, He, which means that that's fear and worry is not a part of who God is. The Bible also says a very important piece on renewal. What does the Bible ask us to renew? The renewing of our mind. So God's very specific in that for a very specific reason. Because he knows where the battles of this life are being waged. It's not... A physical one and we're right back to the Bible again the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood physical but against principalities and powers of the air spiritual we are fighting against demons we are fighting against things we do not see and not against flesh and blood so as a believer this is why it's so important for you to know the Word of God the answers are there but until the word of God becomes part of you, if you don't know what's in an instruction booklet, 
then don't be surprised that you don't know how to put some there's nothing that drives me more crazy than somebody who opens up a piece of like ikea furniture but doesn't and, and then fails to open up the instructions and then wonders why they put it together backwards nothing drives me more nuts than that and you know the, the same thing applies with with god if we don't take the time every day to get into that word, and I'm telling you, I've read the word through and through, but every single time that I read the word, at no matter what day, <clears throat> what portion of the word it is, every single time, it's a new word. He, it's almost like a regeneration. I could, I could, uh, it's, it's unreal. It's awesome. The word of God's amazing. And my point is, learn it. Have it within you. When you learn the Word of God, when you consume the Word of God, it becomes part of you. This process, when you are consuming the Word of God and it becomes part of you, helps to renew your mind. Because you're no longer thinking in your human or your sinful ways or carnal ways of thoughts you even inadvertently begin to to think in a spiritual way you are under the process of renewing your mind the bible says to put on the full armor of god helmet of salvation shield of faith sword of the spirit breastplate of righteousness let your feet be shod with the gospel of peace and your legs with truth. Now see, that's a truth in the word that if you don't know it, you don't even know what your armor is. What does it stand for? What does he mean when he says helmet of salvation? Why is it a helmet of salvation and not a shield of salvation? Why is it your feet with peace and your legs with truth? Does that mean because he wants you to walk in peace and everywhere that you go, he wants you to be going in peace? Does that mean that every step that you take with your legs, he wants you to take those steps in truth? Absolutely, that's what it means. So as you dig into that and as you begin to renew your mind, that word becomes part of you. You are going to understand and see that we can't be like people in this world. He has called us to be set apart, not better set apart for a reason he didn't make you to worry he did not fashion you to worry if you are in a state of panic worry depression sadness you are not in the will and or presence of god because if you are worry will run from you I can't worry that I'm out of work right now. I don't have it in me to worry. And I know I don't have to because God has already provided for me because his word promised me. The Bible also says that all my promises are yes and amen. What does that tell me? Exactly what I need to know. I, because I've got the word in me, I know that the Bible also says, notice it keeps going back to the word. The Bible also says that he will provide all of my needs according to his riches and glory. He promised me that in this season where I'm out of work for months because of COVID, he promised to take care of me and my family. I remind him of that every single day. I worship him in that. I reread those verses to encourage me in that. I got cut off there, I apologize. So <clears throat> I reread those verses to encourage me in that. And if I didn't, it wouldn't take really any, any amount of time for me to be all consumed again. So I'm gonna, I wanna try to, I'm gonna shorten this up and be done. <clears throat> my next point is this and you know the last couple of times we've I've, I've, I've said I've challenged people to take a five day fast with off of social media not just social media but media take five days off do not read about coronavirus do not read about the elections do not read about anything 
accept your word. Make yourself do that for five days. Purge, give yourself a spiritual purge so that you can get yourself into a right mind. And you're going to break strongholds. Don't ask why you feel the way that you feel. Don't ask why you're so stressed. At you. When you, there's some people out there, when you wake up, you taste stress. You can. It has a physical taste. God did not call you to that spot, and you are in. You are in the wrong place. You need to stop worrying. But you also need to break some strongholds in your life. One of which is your continuous and, and unbelievable fascination with TikTok, with uh, you know Facebook, with Instagram, with news, with essentially everything that is not edifying you spiritually is what you have consumed yourself with. And on the end of it, you're asking why? Why, why? Your worry can cause you cancer. Worry can cause you immediate death. Worry is not who we are. It is a carnal nature. And he called us out of that. And he gave us the opportunity to be out of that through his death birth, death, and resurrection. Because Christ came and was born and died for our sin and was resurrected into his new body, it gives you the opportunity to do the same. For one, for two, it also allows you to put to death anything that's in your carnal makeup. And it also gives you an opportunity to not just have that disgusting human carnal portion of us die, but also gave us the example and the representation that, hey, not only can you put all of that to death, not only am I going to forgive you for all of that, but guess what else I'm going to do? I'm going to raise you up, just like Lazarus out of that grave as well. I'm going to raise you up, and I'm going to make you a new creature created in my image. I'm going to make you be able to not worry. But you got to put the work in. You have to do it. I'm here to encourage you, and I want you to know that I love you. We are all in this thing together. But the message today is pretty simple. Stop worrying. Start reading. Get in your word. Get in your prayer time with the Lord. And you are going to absolutely be amazed at how much your life changes. I love you. I'm going to continue. I'm going to press in. I ask God every single day to speak to me so that I can speak to you. And, and he's doing that. And I'm, I'm appreciative of it. And I love you. And we'll talk soon.